All right. Back with Code Veronica. Let's do this thing. Let's do some good old fashioned disc swapping. I'm gonna open this disc. Gonna put disc two in here. Slam that lid down. Let the Dreamcast know what's up. And we mean business about switching these discs. trashed. Well, let's split up and find another way off this oversized freezer. Right. Okay, let's do it. Steve did not know how to handle having physical contact with a girl. I mean, it was just accidental. But, you know, still, it activated that, that sound, that bling sound effect that they used for that. I feel like that would be a pretty good sound to, to play uh, over a lot of interactions between characters in video games. Alright, Steve's gotta go somewhere until his raging boner subsides. We can all understand that. Alright, where do we want to go? Well, we want to examine the uh, Antarctic base. We have some ammo on us. Let's just equip our regular gun. Might as well do this in order. And as Steve said, the plane is trashed. There's no way we're, we're using that to get out of here. But what's that? A zombie? How can there be a zombie here in the Antarctic base? How could the T-virus have made its way here? That doesn't make sense. Should be just all healthy humans here. A mystery to solve. Well, he can't get out of there. It's dark. Unfortunately, Claire does not have her lighter. Because, you know, Rodrigo has it. Now, we got a blue herb, which is, you know, ominous, because the blue herb cures poison. It's a metal shop machine with a diamond cutting edge. I can use this to process metal materials easily, if only we had some metal materials. You know, I do think that it's a neat little uh, tension building thing when a video game gives you something to remedy something that has not appeared yet. Right, so if we have some metal of some kind that we need to cut, maybe we could use this machine to do it. Also, we can see something glowing in there. Like an item? A Duralumin case? Can't get in there, though. Maybe later. Well, this bridge is out. Can't, go, can't get to the rest of the room. And this is locked. It's labeled Machine Room. Now, Alfred was following us in his jet. He hasn't shown up yet. But we shouldn't let our guard down.
By the way, what's this place called? It's called Antarctic Transport Terminal 5th. They're only useless books. If only there was something of use besides books, besides literature. Claire doesn't want any of that. Get it out of here. All right, building up our bullets back. And a bow gun powder. I did run out of my explosive arrows. So that's useful. Well, I guess it was nothing. Or maybe not! And all the zombies woke up. On cue. Ma'am, did... Ma'am, did you take the bow gun powder? That's very dangerous stuff, ma'am. Need to be a trained professional. Uh, give me back the powder, please. You're gonna hoit yourself trying to combine the powder with the with the bow gun arrows. Damn, please. We have procedure we need to follow. I, you can't just do what you want willy nilly here in an Antarctic base. This place runs like a well oiled machine. You know how in inhospitable the outside is? You have to make sure there's no no funny business or hijinks going on here. More bullets. Ah, worker's diary. Okay, who are these workers? What's been going on with them? October 30th, when I joined Umbrella Inc., I thought I would be able to live carefree for the rest of my life, being employed by this huge corporation. It's a joke that I ended up being a driver at a place like this. I asked for a position change, but they completely ignored me. It feels more like the prison. Work is extremely demanding, and there's nothing fun about it. I'd rather be dead. November Thoid. My hard-earned vacation was cancelled suddenly. I heard they failed to secure enough manpower due to a mistake made by the facility head, Alfred. That, that fool doesn't, forgive, for, doesn't deserve forgiveness. Doesn't even treat us like human beings. Okay, so Alfred is the head of this base as well. November 5th. I heard an interesting story from a guy who's been working here for over eight years. He must be awfully patient. He says that there is a man who has been confined for over ten years, locked up in a cell located deep below here. People call him Nosferatu and are deathly afraid of him. What an absurd story! November 10th, at midnight, I woke up to an ominous growling sound that seemed to be coming from deep underground. I'm so pathetic to be frightened by such a foolish story. Then again, I suppose anyone would have a hard time maintaining the sanity. They were confined to a place like this. Alright, thought there were going to be good times ahead working for Umbrella. You get sent to the Antarctic, and they won't let you leave. What are you going to do? Nothing. That's what you're going to do. Uh, well, I'm going to take an ink ribbon, is what I'm going to do. What, what she said? It's quite a mess, is what she said. And there, there's a map. I can barely see it because it's dark, but there, it is there. I got the base map. A bed. This must have been the workers' lodgings. All right. No one here likes working here. Alfred is in charge of this base, and apparently there is a prisoner underground named Nosferatu. Probably nothing. Just an old worker's tale.
Well, that's an odd sound. Let's put some stuff away. Well, actually, let's combine this with this to get those. And... All right, what's that sound we're hearing? Well, first we can re- I mean, probably we should turn the lights on before we try to read anything. Bad for your eyes. Here's Alexander's memo. Alexander being uh, Alfred and Alexia's father. You know, the disgrace. For some reason, the Ashford family uh, is not doing too well under his rule. My father, Edward, discovered the mother virus in cooperation with Lord Spencer, who was also a nobleman. They studied it for the purpose of military use. Eventually, their study took shape. They named a variation of the mother virus, the T-Virus. To camouflage their research, they established Umbrella Chemical, Inc. I majored in biogenetics and have been involved with a top-secret project supporting my father's research. However, my research went through a difficult phase, and my father died in the middle of the project. We are now at a major disadvantage against other researchers, as there is a great competition in the field of T-Virus research. Yes, really. There's a lot of competition. I have disgraced the honorable name of the Ashford family that our great ancestor Veronica established. If nothing is done, Umbrella will be taken over by Spencer. I must expedite the project to the fullest without being detected by Spencer. After much thought, I decided to establish a large-scale advanced research facility. It will be located in the transport terminal that I created by using the abandoned mine in the Antarctic. Within the facility, I'll have a room built. It will be similar to the design of my mansion, the legacy of the late Trevor. I will be able to cherish my sweet memories there. For security purposes, this confidential project will be given a code name. It is the name of the beautiful ancestor of the Ashford family, Veronica, whom I wish to revive so badly. I am confident that the result of my research will be as glorious as her name, and that honor will be restored to the Ashford family once again. Alright, so apparently the disgrace that Alexander brought upon the family was that his father died unexpectedly. It fell to him to carry on the research. His project is undergoing complications and is not getting results. And because of that, there's like a power struggle with an umbrella. Uh, between Spencer and the Ashford family, and Spencer's winning, Spencer's going to take over. This is the disgrace that they're talking about. Umbrella slipped out of the grasp of the Ashford family because of Alexander's failure. However, Alexander says that he will create a secret project in the Antarctic that he believes will restore the glorious Ashford family name, Code Veronica. So that's why the game is called that, because there's a secret project here. We don't know what it is, but there's something happening in this base. Of course, now, I I'm saying all this, but of course we know that... Actually, actually, Spencer was able to get the advantage because he visited Mother Miranda in Romania and found out about the mold and was able to use that as his inspiration for his research. You see, that's that's the actual we now know the true reason why Spencer was able to pull ahead of Ashford because of the mold, the mold. <laughs> It all it all comes back around. It all it's all comes it all comes ar around in a circle. Anyway, what are we hearing here? Hmm, a mouse. How strange. Butler's letter. Sir Alfred, please forgive me, as I must tell you of my abrupt departure by leaving this letter. 
I first served your father, Lord Alexander, and have for so long shared in the joys and sorrows of the Ashford family. Lord Alexander disappeared unexpectedly 15 years ago, then an accident during an experiment took the life of our dear Alexia. You were forced to become the master of the family at a very young age, and nearly lost your sanity from the sorrow of having lost all of your family members at once. There was nothing I could do, and I felt powerless. I first thought that I should kill myself to apologize, and then realized that it would then be an insult to our dear Lord Alexander and Alexia in the other world. Scott Harmon, Butler. Ashford family. All right, so 15 years ago, dad vanished. Alexia died in an experiment. And uh, Alfred didn't take this well. And the, the butler is saying, hey, I have to resign. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry you kind of lost your mind about this. There's a switch. I'll push it. But it's, it operates on electricity. There's no response. I need to restore the power. Also over here, there's an indentation in the shape of a halberd. Yeah, we saw Alfred use like a gold, like a little gold halberd to open up a door where his fighter jet was. So Alfred has a key like that. But we don't. Ah, big bugs. So these are the poison enemies. I didn't get... My controller is telling me that I did not get poisoned. I'm looking at my controller. I have a status of fine. So those are the enemies that can, that can get you with the poison. And uh, they're in a hallway that we have to go through a few times. Stay down, please, sir. There you go. Anyone else? I think that's everyone. Something flashing above me. There's a door here. It says weapon. There's another door here, but we can't really see what that says. Oh, certainly. Let's go into the B.O.W. room. Gas mask lock releases if a gas leak occurs. We can't get that gas mask at the moment. There's no gas leak. I want to go into the bioorganic weapon room. What could possibly be wrong in there? Spiders. Also, it poisoned me. My controller tells me so. Well, we'll take care of that. Give me a sec. Ow. There's someone below the floor. Oh, here's another one. Anyway, I'm going to take the barcode sticker. This is why I came in here. Yeah, there's a there's a third spider that's crawling underneath the floor. I can't get I can't get to it. It's unkillable for the moment. Storehouse BOW got a barcode on it. An identification sticker used to sort the loads. Got to sort some loads. They do have a blue herb right here. So that's good. Just just ignore the crawly boy under there. There we go. Okay, well, we need to find some way to get this gas mask out. Why do we need it? Well, we don't know, but it's there, so clearly we will need it. But to get the gas mask open, there needs to be a gas leak. There's a notice on this box. Anti-BOW gas, handle with care. Control panel for a sorter. 
There's no power. Power switch for the sorter. No power. I need to restore the power. Oh, actually, I should probably go back to handgun. All right, let's try going into weapon room. It's pointing out there's something, ab there's a box above me. Well, here's the mining room key. We'll always take a key. Alright, and while we're on our way, we might want to take a look in here. We got an assault rifle. It was just hanging out right here. No, not combined. Check. AK-47 assault rifle. Uses 7.62 millimeter bullets. Alright, so this is one of those uh, weapons that has a percentage for the uh, for the ammo. Missiles are lined up here. I wonder what they plan to use them for. And we'll never know. Take the detonator? I will take the detonator. A heat-sensitive detonator. What might you need one for? It's locked. Explosives are set, but the detonator is missing. All right, so this gentleman set some explosives on this cabinet and was trying to set the detonator, but clearly did not make it. Well, we can set it for him. There we go. The explosive is heat sensitive. Unfortunately, Claire doesn't have her lighter. She traded it for the lockpick. Well, shucks. She has no way of lighting that up. Unfortunate. What could possibly- obviously, there would have been treasures beyond your comprehension in that cabinet. If only we had a lighter. If only. Let's take a look at this key. A key used to open the door of the mining room. Sure is. Text on that side is backwards. On this side, it says... hold on. What? What? Radioni Keys. That's a brand name you can trust. Alright, so that machine room, the mining room, is this. I don't need this key anymore. Get it out of here! Strange room made out of rough rock. We're over like a, well, a pit, really. There's a hole shaped like an octagon. There's a notice. Poison gas, in case of an emergency, seal off. Okay, let's remember that in case we ex experience poison gas. Also, there's nothing I can do with this right now, but I have to look at it. And the reason is, I need to know that, that there's an octagon there. For later. Like, Claire needs to know that. If you don't look at it, she won't know that it's an octagon. That's for later. I mean, it makes sense. It's just funny.
There are dogs here. There are also some green herbs. And we found a lever for the generator. Well, the main thing we're trying to do right now is turn the power on. And that power is on. Power has been restored. Let na yes, the power has been restored. I do want to restore the power. Just make absolutely sure that I want to do that. There we go. Lights are on. We are absolutely 100% confirming we like some power to be restored, please. Yeah, that's fine. All right, now that the power's back on, what can we do? What can't we do? Well, the lights are on, so now we can actually see some things. You know, this whole place was dark. This would have been the perfect place to have a lighter to, to illuminate. Uh, if only we had one, but we've traded it for the lockpick, and that's the burden we must bear. All right, so we've powered up this sorter here. It sorts boxes. I can push the switch. It sends that box out. But now I also have this box over here, which says that it has anti-BOW gas. Where do you think I might want to send a box containing anti-BOW gas? Maybe I want to send it to the BOW room? Slap that sticker on there. And then... And send it on its way. Alright, let's check out what happened in the B.O.W. room. All right, it's green in here. The gas did open up in this room. However, Claire is not a BOW, so she is not she does not have to worry about this gas. However, since there is gas, the gas mask is now available. You could Claire could breathe this gas all day. Protect yourself from poison gas with this. Sounds like a good idea. That spider's probably not having a good time, though. Whoop. Yeah, here's the gas over here. It's broken. It's, le it's leaking anti-BOW gas. Alright, now, but there was a second box that went somewhere. Let's see if anything happened in the weapon room. Oh no, fire. A magnum can be seen. Well, well. The fire is preventing from me from taking it. Yeah, so the magnum, generally one of the most powerful weapons in a Resident Evil game. It's right over there, tantalizingly close, on the other side of this fire. If only we had some sort of fire extinguisher that we could use to put out this fire. Alas... The only thing we have is an empty fire extinguisher. We can't do anything with that. 
Ah, uh, what could have been. I guess we'll just have to forget about that Magnum. Forever. Anyway. We have a gas mask. We turn the power on. There's a Magnum we cannot get. Is there anything else we can do? Well, there are these... We don't want to get hit by these moths. Now, I said I don't want to get hit by the moths. It laid an egg on me. Leg, it laid an egg right on Claire's back. It's disgusting. Yeah, see, it's crawling all over us. Get out of here. So, I don't, if you mash the button, it doesn't actually start hurting you. If you don't, it, it bites you. But, like, the main thing is that it's it, like, locks you in position for a couple seconds while you pull it off. And that if there are other enemies in the room, that can be a problem. But what's not a problem is that we turn the power on. Which means we can press this button. I like how the, the locker door closes as it slides open. Just like a nice little detail as it does that. Well, turns out that the legendary mysterious prisoner down there is real. I hear that. He's not having a good time. There's a, pa a plant pot here. That's the only thing that's here. But we could take a look at it. Another key. It's the machine room key, found at the bottom of the pot. This is also made by Radioni Keys. It's the only brand name to trust with your keys. Alright, you know, Claire feels bad for that guy, but what can we do? We have our own concerns to worry about. Alright, uh, let's put away... Green herbs. Green herb. Uh, could probably put this away for right now, since we have this AK-47 for the time being. Pardon? All right, so we did see the door that this key goes to. It was over here. Let's get rid of that machine room key and head into the machine room. observation base about seven miles away from here that should be our target great news and take a look at that it's a digging vehicle if we break the wall with it we might have a chance okay let's do it My fault. Don't say that. 
Listen to me. We'll escape from here. Together. Come on. We've got to shut off the gas. If we split up, we'll have a better chance of stopping it. Okay. Steve! Don't forget. We'll get out of here. Together. Just goes to show that the scariest thing in this game is Steve. Everything was going fine, Steve. Everything was going okay. Well, toxic gas has been released in the room. Fortunately, we do have a gas mask. I was just looking at the control panel, Steve, and he just burst into the room. The poison gas detection lamp is on. Also, the air is yellow. So, you know, nothing else to, to really look at here. Oh yeah, now this is a Resident Evil game. Look at this. That's right. It's a valve handle. That's as good as a crank. A good it's just like a crank. This this game has been missing something up to now. <clears throat> okay, so now we can go down. Remember that room that had uh, the octagonal thing, and it said you have to seal this off for poison gas. So there's nothing stopping us from going down there? Nothing at all. Claire is gonna get the job done. You know, Steve, he has some issues right now. He's feeling bad because his main issue in the game is that he feels like he needs to be able to be relied upon because he was not able to rely upon his family. So, like, he's, he screwed up big, and he is he's trying to get over that. But that's kind of his main emotional issue that he has. Can he be someone that Claire can rely on? The person that his dad wasn't to him. I mean, not at, not at this rate, Steve. To be honest, not at this rate. So we could go over here. And we could, tr we could use a valve handle. Valve handle and a valve port? What could go wrong? No need to use it now, but I think there is. Why would there not be a need to use it now? But then, oh dear. That's a square, isn't it? It sure is. It, I like that the text doesn't actually say that. It, it relies on you to rotate it around and notice that it's a square. So square, uh, square. So Claire, square to her friends, uh, has to do a little uh, metal work. Uh, no, st stop laying eggs on my back, please. So I've been getting pretty lucky with those hits from the moths, as I have not been getting poisoned. But they can poison you. So what can we do to fix this valve? Well, we did see the metalworking machine over here. He's still trapped in there. Don't worry about him. All right. And uh, by the way, if we did not look at the octagonal thing, uh, Claire would not know what to do here.
I've taken the Octa Valve handle. We should probably confirm it is indeed Octa. Yep. That's eight sides if I've ever seen them. Before, oh, now, I think now, yeah, now we're poisoned. <clears throat> Before we use this, it might be a good time to save. For no particular reason. Let's see. Well, I'm poisoned. Let me get a blue herb first. There we go. So, this is another thing that people tend not to like about this game. Maybe it would not be nice to know what I need and to put anything else in the box. So, for some reason, I'm going to put my AK-47 away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my gas mask and my, my valve wheel. I think what I'll do... is I'll take my gun and my ammo. All right, we're on fine now. And let's take this. And you know, it probably won't come up. But I'll take the knife. Just because... There was one time I did run out of ammo. It's very unlikely. And actually, I don't know how that happened that one time. Alright. Let's, uh... Go back to that... That octoport, so I can seal off the toxic gas. Oh no, zombies! They repopulated the area. As if I've made progress of some kind. Let's use our new octa valve handle to turn off the poison. <sighs> We're safe now. In the game, Claire. I shall enjoy watching you shriek in agony. Not this time! You get
All right, I guess he just needed some motivation to get out of that chair. Oh, hey, but not only did Alfred fall down a pit, but he dropped his rifle. We should probably pick that up. I think you can leave without getting it, but it would be good to get it. We got the sniper rifle. I've taken the sniper rifle. Only seven bullets. It cannot be reloaded. Claire! What are you doing? Let's go! Fine, fine, mister. I'm willing to risk my life to get golden guns. Go for it! Right. Claire, maybe we can escape through there. Come on, let's go. Man, they're taking this cold temperature and horrific winds like a champ. Claire, come on! Finally, we can get out of this insane place! We sure will. We sure will. First, let's take a look at our sniper rifle. MR7. This is an American bolt-action rifle. You can snipe a distant enemy with its scope. Yeah. Yeah, we can, can't we? I don't think you can kill Steve. Let's go over here. And there's a first aid spray hiding over here. All right, let's get on out of here. Okay, let's go. Come on, let's go. What are you scared? Alright, so here's Nosferatu. Um, so, what do we say about him? So he's sweeping his arms around, and that's poison gas that's blowing in the wind. Now, we will probably get poisoned. Because look how far- look at the range this has. Now, even if I brought- even if I brought a blue herb with me, I don't think the blue herb cures this poison. Which means... You can't act, once you get poisoned, you can't actually heal yourself. Look at look at the combo of that poison. I am not poisoned yet, however. So I'm gonna equip the the reason I'm equipping the handgun is because if you can kill him with the sniper rifle, you get like a little bonus animation. So let's so let's try to soften him up with the handgun bullets first. Now, hitting him with the sniper rifle is kind of a problem because you can see how much fog there is. Also, Nosferatu has probably my favorite boss theme in a Resident Evil game. Yeah, we're poisoned now. Alright, I unloaded some bullets into him. We could do a bit more. Alright, 
right, let's try the sniper rifle. It's very foggy. I'm trying to hit him in the heart. Nah, hit him in the head both times. That was a hard shot. Oh yeah, I'm in danger status. Now, I don't think the poison can kill me. But his tentacles can. I don't think I have many sniper rifle bullets. Yeah, only one bullet left. Mm, did not get the animation. You know, there is a special animation if you kill him with the knife. What are the chances I could get it? Well, I'm in danger status, so it's unlikely. Oh, he's down. He's down. Steve! Are you alright? I'm sorry. I failed you. Don't worry about it. Let's go. I swear I'll protect you next time, Claire. over there perfect we'll be able to ride right over to the Australian base with this yeah let's go I won't forget about this Claire Oh, 
the end. Uh, well, maybe not. In the meantime, on an isolated island, Chris Redfield, dot, dot, dot. Following up on a lead given to me by Leon has brought me here. I like the little detail about how he drops his bag to explain why he starts off with only this. He has a knife, gun, first aid spray, bullets. He had a whole lot of stuff in that bag, I'm sure. An entire arsenal in the bag, but he lost it. Oh well. Alright, here's our second protagonist for the game, Chris Redfield. Height 5'9", weight 107, 177 and a half. Blood type O. His logo is the Stars logo, which is not surprising. All right, we're back on Rockford Island, and, well, it's blown up. So what's he going to do? Well, there's someone here. First, let's take this herb. I didn't expect to find another living person left on this island. Who are you? I came here looking for a certain girl. A girl? Have you seen anyone named Claire Redfield? Did you just say... Claire? You know who she is, don't you? Don't worry about her. I helped her escape. Several planes took off from this island not long ago. While I can't say for certain, she was probably on one of them. I see. I guess my sister owes you. Thanks for helping. Everyone's gone. I may be the only other person left. Go on. Follow your sister and get off this island. Well, I guess Claire's not here. There's nothing. Oh no! We forgot about our friend, the gulp worm. Oh no, Rodrigo! I must save! Might be a little late. It might be a little too late for that. Alright, well, uh, first let's examine, where, like, you know, let, graves! Some of them are very old. These could be the early residents of the island. Look, there's things to look at, even though Rodrigo is an incredible, is probably already dead. Dedicate on light of my right hand. I can put the stone lid down. I will put- yes, Claire, Chris has to think about these things, despite uh, Rodrigo's current situation. Two submachine guns are placed here, but I cannot open that for the time. There's a box. And bowgun arrows. How fortunate. Alright. So, Claire has been running away from the gulp worm all this time, but Chris is here now, and the gulp worm is a, is a problem, so we have to, we're gonna have to do something about this. Uh, let's combine our arrows. Let's get our bow gun out. Uh, more arrows. More arrows. Here's our explosive arrows, that's good. Uh, more arrows. Let's combine them all into one thing. Here we go. Let's combine that. Let's put that in there, and we might as well take, uh, the, the grenade launcher while we're at it. And I don't know what is supposed to work best, but I, it seemed to me that the flame rounds work pretty well in this part. 
So, okay, I mentioned before before the fight with Nosferatu that during that the last time we were at the box with Claire, it's important to ha- to be kind of aware of what you might want to take with you and what you might want to put in the box, because anything that was on Claire is still on Claire, and anything she put in the box is available to Chris. So that's something that tends to frustrate people. So now Chris has Claire's bow gun with explosive arrows. Just want to make sure that they all count. Make sure I get a good shot. Ow. There we go. I mean, Chris doesn't know Rodrigo, so he's not going to yell that. I guess I have to. He's not breathing anymore. The worm's not breathing anymore, and he's not saying it, so I guess I have to. All right, so... Dramatic death scene. On a practical level, the reason we did that was to get the lighter back. So now Chris has it. Like, I mean, aside from the emotional story beats. Not, but not only is Rodrigo dead, the gulp worm is dead. How are we ever going to move on from the gulp worm? All right. Um, you know, I could probably just put away my grenade launcher. I wasn't actually sure how many of these explosive arrows it would take. It took, what, four? Did not take much. That's probably fine for right now. Well, actually, there's something else we would be taking, because I have the lighter. No, not that. That's military training facility. Since I have the lighter, that means... We can use it on this. Light it up! And take the submachine guns. There we go. I'll just take an ink ribbon. And this would be a good time to save. So, Claire and Steve, uh, apparently dead. Killed by Alexia, who has, turns out, she has the power of tentacles. Uh, so she used her tentacle to uh, apparently kill our, our sweet duo. And now we've switched over to Chris for the second protagonist. Chris has come to the island because he got Leon's email. And he's found that Claire is not here. But what is he to do? Chris has to try to figure out how he need how can he get to Claire? So the only thing he can do is explore the blown up prison, the blown up Rockford base. Uh, see the remnants of what happened to a location after the self-destruct mechanism went off. Because we usually don't see that. Usually you escape the place, it blows up, and then that's it for the place. Here we've returned to the place, which is all wrecked because it blew up. And uh, Chris has to do some things here. Try to find out how he can get to Claire. Who at this point seems to be dead. Also, Alfred seems to be dead. But Alexia is alive. Turns out Alexia did not die. Uh, but rather she was in a, a tube. Like a tube full of fluid. Doing science. 
what, what, what kind of science? Well, well, we'll find out as we continue on, but apparently the science involves tentacles, as all good science does. Can Chris Redfield fight against the power of tentacles? I mean, he's not even, like, big and muscular in this one. The stats they give for him... Is he really 5'9"? Because, I mean, look, you look at how he looks in RE5 and Village, and he's just a monster of a man. Like, maybe whatever he was taking gave him a growth spurt. I don't know. Um, so, we will be continuing on with Resident Evil Code Veronica. And also we learned that Code Veronica is the name of Alexander Ashford's secret project in the Antarctic. But we don't actually know what the secret project is. Maybe we'll find out as we continue on. <laughs> 